Hello. <laughs> Welcome right. to the Paradise Park uh, Inside Talk. Thanks for having Have me. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks. Have you watched uh, Nelson or Jill's video? I did, yeah. I did? Yeah, then you know the concept. Yeah. So yeah, basically Inside Talk is inviting coffee professionals and uh, professionals in other beverage industry to hear their insights on industry and their professional field and we are kind of uh, make a uh, just have conversation to learn and we try to uh, get some idea of what we can uh, apply onto our programs for our next projects so nice. it's in our media program that yeah that's great yeah. happy to be here pleasure so yeah you're very well known coffee importer in Canada yeah, but yeah yeah you are but Apex coffee <laughs> yeah, is like well known between the roasters, but maybe most of the consumers, the coffee consumers, uh, customers maybe not heard about the Apex yet. So can you simply just uh, introduce yourself? Yeah. Apex coffee. Yeah. So my name is Jeff Fleming. I own Apex Coffee Imports. We started started working on the project 2015, and then we launched in 2016. So the goal was to to try and bring new and interesting coffees that weren't available to Canadian roasters. So it was exclusive like business to business sales. Um, because I was, I've been in the coffee industry for a long time in many different roles and I always wanted to know how certain companies got access to certain coffees that I really love to drink as a consumer. But working in the industry, I didn't really see a way for me to get access to those types of coffees. And so, uh, you know, after many years of kind of wanting to do something like that, I just decided, hey, you know, someone just needs to do this. Because if I'm thinking this, there's other roasters out there that think that too. I want the same types of coffees. So I just jumped in and just decided to do it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, us as Apex, we're focused mostly on selling to roasters well exclusively. So the goal is not to be well known in the consumer world, but we want to try and help and support roasters that are front facing with retail businesses to produce the best quality coffee and most transparent ethical the way that they can. We're here to support them in that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I saw the few of the coffee roasters start to put uh, where their coffee, where they source their coffee from. And I'm just pretty sure if some customer is really reading those details and they might see a pass in mm -hmm. here and there in a few different Yeah, yeah it's, it's great advertising for sure. Yeah. Um, it's always an honor to be on someone's bag. It's uh, it's an honor that I don't take lightly. It's very nice to see. But at the end of the day, it's not about giving recognition for it. We just want to support our customers as much as we possibly can. And we're just, for me anyway, I know I'm the most excited by people's excitement about the coffees that we work with. So, but it's nice to see that people want to advertise and grow that brand as well. It's very, it's an honor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we. We prepared a few questions, and before we ask questions, we have uh, we asked we posted uh, Instagram questions, and we got uh, the question that what is your most memorable green purchase? Can you answer the question first before we move on? Memorable green purchase? Um, it's too easy to say all, but all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think for me, the most memorable thing. I mean, every green purchase is memorable uh, because of the. Like getting specialty coffee of a certain quality is, it's not accidental, it's intentional, but to be able to get it to this country uh, and the journey that it takes is like, it's kind of magical to me still. So every one of them is special. Um, but you know, to actually, the most excited I was ever, uh, but the most exciting thing to me was to be able to sell those coffees again. So I do remember my first sale very clearly. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so many excited about the coffees that I was so excited about, that was really memorable. But even my first buying trip, um, because the company launched in 2016, but we had to get stock, so we went in 2015 to purchase coffees. Uh, and the whole experience was just amazing to think of all these new things we're bringing to the market and how excited I was about it. And being able to meet those farmers that were doing such a good job uh, to highlight their work and to pay them above what they've been getting paid for their coffees. Yeah. So, not to cop out on the answer, but yeah. uh, they're all memorable for different, different reasons. Any like countries you personally prefer? Not just the coffee quality, just the trip itself. Because if you go to like origin trip, obviously it's for work and sourcing yeah. green coffee and tasting lots of coffees. But the trip itself has a lot of other things around. 
environment that people, is there any your favorite countries to do? I mean, because we, we are currently in four countries, so Colombia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Costa Rica. So when we first started, it was, we were pretty much exclusively doing Colombian coffees for like the first year. Uh, so I would travel back and forth every two or three months. So that was, so Colombia is always close to my heart because it's where we started. And I was traveling there since 2012 with, uh, with my old job. Yeah. So um, it's always close to my heart in that respect. Um, they all are memorable for different reasons. Um, you know, like working in a country like Costa Rica, it's very simple. Uh, the process is very simple to get there. It's very simple, easy to travel. You can, you know, the coffee regions are within you know, uh, close driving distance to from where I mean, cities that you're staying. Um, to get access to this top quality coffees is tricky. You have to really work at building relationships because they don't produce a lot of coffee. So um, there's a high level of competition to get those top lots. So it takes a few years of building relationship and trust. And, and yeah. meeting the right types of people to get access to the, the best quality of coffees that you can find. In a place like Ethiopia, where it's got a long history of coffee, obviously it's the birthplace of coffee. Yeah. Uh, you know, they do a great job with their logistics, but they face difficulties that we in, Canada, in Canada don't face, like uh, you know, the road will be washed out, or there's uh, you know, different political things going on, yeah. or the government changes export rules. And so just to get the coffees out is a huge challenge. But you know, when you get those copies here, they can be magical. So it just depends on what what area of it. But mm -hmm. I still think Colombia is probably because it's my first country. That's my most memorable. Yeah. Yeah. How so? So one of my curious thing about like relationship building relationship with the origin. Like I, I just imagine it's going to be very difficult to build a relationship with uh, the people in the supply chain because first of all. <laughs> Uh, green important yourself lives in Canada, and those people in the origin country is in their own country. It's a like, physically long distance, so you are visiting them like frequently, but still is like one time visit and then long pause. So, how is the relationship uh, is mean to you, and how to build how you build the relationship with those uh, people in the origin? Country? Yeah, it's. I mean, a lot of it is relationships for sure. I mean, it's never been easier to buy coffee, roasted coffee, green coffee, I mean, the internet and Zoom, and, you know, it's very simple. But to get stuff that we can actually have a meaningful impact, yeah. you know, with, with coffee farmers, uh, it takes time, it takes the right amount of people. So when I was first starting out, you almost interview companies to work with, because yeah. no one works, you know, on their own. Everyone has to work with someone on the ground. So. You almost have to interview companies and just get a feel for what their values are. Does it align with, with my company values? And are they, you know, do you align on coffee and how things work? And so you kind of go through a little bit of like a job interview process to find the right types of people. And you know, I'm a bit old school in that way. So face to face, you get a feel for someone's energy and what they're about, and you meet them in a social setting. And how are they? How do they interact with? With farmers and other people in the supply chain. So for me, I'm always observing these types of things, and then I can make a decision. Okay, this is the group that I want to work with. And then you know, it's the same as me, right? I you want to be judged on your last sale. So if you're supporting a customer and all of a sudden you start doing a bad job, you should expect that customer to look elsewhere. It's the same for me, right? So we're always evaluating the partners that we're working with, yeah. and we want to maintain a standard, a certain standard. And if that starts to fall, we have to have a conversation. But luckily, we haven't had to do that yet. Who is your longest uh, relationship in purchase? Probably the one that we've consistently been with since the very beginning. I still remember tasting this coffee the very first trip. Um, yeah, it was December 2015. It was uh, Roberto Rojas in Colombia. Oh, yeah. So he's a farmer from Acevedo, Mula. And so I tasted his coffee. It was like, mind-blowing how good it was. So then you meet him and you realize he's got a large farm and he's producing quite a bit of coffee. And so we've been buying his coffee every harvest. Since yeah, since the first year of Apex, so he'd be our longest relationship, and you know, just keeps growing. Does a fantastic job. Love to visit his farm. And customers always look forward to his coffee when they arrive. So that's always super meaningful. And the, you said you're looking for their like people and um, kind of see their value is matching to your value. So you have wide range of uh, coffee producers, like family 
size, mm-hmm. producers to bigger size uh, coffee producers. Yeah. Are you uh, do like same? Are you expect same like core value from those people? Yeah, I mean, different Yeah, I mean, some we're working with some families and they're producing like three bags. I bought coffees out of one bag lots before, yeah. and then we work with large estates, what I would call states that are producing multiple containers of coffee. Um, you know, because of because they're larger doesn't mean they're bad, or because they're small doesn't mean they're bad. I mean, it's all about values and what you're doing. So what's their, you know, they have the same values with the environment, making an impact with farmers, making sure that people are fairly paid throughout. Those are all factors in it, for sure. Yeah, I think it's kind of similar the relationship as a roaster. So they Kim coffee is like exclusively buying. Green coffee from Apex. We, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, and because the the first reason was uh, I met you at like, separate different places, but while you were helping me the Brewers Cup mm-hmm. competition, yeah, yeah, you judged, and after judge you, you judged at the national, I asked all the judges in Calgary to help me to get the feedback, yeah, and. During that like conversation, I feel like I can trust Jeff. You, yeah, I I feel like I can trust this person to work with. So after that, everything was quite aligned pretty well, and it was very easy to serve. I think that right. kind of relationship is kind of similar. Your relationship with producers is that. Yeah. No, first of all, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you for putting your trust in me. Thanks and what we do. Um, but yeah, it's the same with any, you know, with people that you meet, you are what you are, right? So, yeah. um, you can tell people who are authentic and care, um, you know, if, if that's what you're into. If you want someone that's just into business and numbers, I mean, that's fine too, no judgments. But, you know, for me, it's like a, I want a more holistic approach, you know, more all-encompassing. I want an authentic experience. When we meet people, we want to have the same values. I want them to be about the coffee, because that's what we're about. Yeah. We're not about the the fame, the recognition, and all that sort of stuff. We want the best coffees we can get. Yeah. And that's what we value the most. And also done in a fair and transparent way. Yeah. So that's what I try and project out there. Hopefully you bring that energy back. Yeah. yeah. The green purchase is definitely a huge portion that I never experienced. So like, it was kind of really, I was looking for a high, when I, so when I was planning to Lunch gave him coffee, the coffee roasting company yeah. a few years ago, like two and a half years ago. And I was contacting like a few different uh, green uh, importers. And then it was pretty hard to find the right fit. Because some are like beer companies requires a certain amount to purchase, and uh, other like, companies have a wide range of coffee, but doesn't have something that I really interested in and I'm not sure this company is going to uh, importing like these types of coffee year after year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was quite lucky that I find my best in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the same. But yeah. when we, we, have, we get a lot of phone calls from different grocers around yeah. the country. They're not all great fits for what we do. So we try not to, uh, you know, we don't want everyone to over promise and under deliver. So I don't want to meet a roaster and tell them everything they want to hear to get a sale, and then that's the only sale we get. We don't want to leak customers as fast as we get them in. Like, we want to have a high retention rate. The only way to do that is to be honest. So what are we and what are we not? And then, you know, it's like an interplay with the, with the client too, right? So, you know, that's why I like to talk to people on the phone or in person, get a feel for what they're about. And not everyone has the same value system. Or, you know, our coffees are very seasonal. I think that's what makes it interesting. Not everybody's about that. And their clients in their whatever city or town they're operating in, they want, you know, something that's not seasonal. They want to have it consistent throughout the year, which is cool. Yeah. Not a great probably fit for what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so there's always, you just have to understand it. And you have to listen to people too. You know, a lot of people, because we're, basically I'm doing a sales job, right? We're doing yeah. sales. The number one thing in sales is to shut up and listen to people. <laughs> and then you can understand what they're actually asking for and then that's how you build a long term repeat uh, business. Yeah. You, you know, to me it would be a, it's a lot of work to to meet someone and you know, start selling them coffee, but then you don't want to just have it, them disappointed after the first sale. That's yeah. important to me. Yeah. 